It's wonderful not just to have internally focused this great society where as Jews we can uh, celebrate uh, our uh, uh, identity, where Chabad can do uh, the great uh, work that it does. Chabad is everywhere. Um, and where we can do things, just, just so some of the people on the panel understand this, we, this is sort of like, almost like a Jewish Christmas where you go around giving people presents, which life are not in particular is sort of uh, uh, it's a lot of fun to give people uh, presents, uh, more in the giving than in the receiving as they say. Um, but the message of Purim that I, I want to conclude with is, I'm sorry, not a, uh, a pleasant one. It's the, the, the message of Haman and what happened to Haman. Uh, and isn't it interesting uh, that all these years later it's Persia. We're talking about Persia. Uh, and we have probably now uh, the greatest threat to world peace in Persia with uh, the evil Ahmadinejad. And um, I don't know whether in a, a thousand years time the Jews will be taking these and in the case of Ahmadinejad's name adding it to Haman. But uh, certainly both Josh and Greg have referred to it and I know all of the other speakers agree with this. The Jews are like the, the, uh, the little bird at the bottom of the coal mine that they used to keep to see whether the gas was going to explode the coal mine. Where, where that little bird in world history and world democracy to see whether the safety of the world is being threatened or not. Now, the threat of Iran to Israel, the explicit threat made uh, by the President of Iran to wipe out a sovereign state. The sight of a President of a country holding a conference that said that there is no mass extermination of the Jewish people during the Second World War. The sight of a little Levantine man, President of Iran, standing there with David Duke of the Ku Klux Klan must send a shiver down the spine of any person, Jew, non-Jew, any Democrat all around the world, because what it symbolises is here is a country that is led by deeply crazy people. Deeply crazy people. People like Haman. People who would, against the interests of their own civilization, um, bring destruction of another people. And the problem with Iran is that it threatens not just Israel, it has rockets that threaten Riyadh and um, Cairo and uh, Moscow and even, uh, even Paris and Bonn and uh, Berlin now. So the, the problem that the Jews face with annihilation, etc., we've seen during the Second World War, the message is if we don't stand up to this kind of intolerance, if we don't stand up to genocide, if we don't stand up to these kind of threats, it visits us first, but it comes and visits everyone else afterwards. That's why I find it my obligation in federal parliament always to raise issues of Darfur and Rwanda, etc. It should be the Jews who are the first people to raise the issue of genocide. We don't want to visit it on us, we don't want to visit it on anyone else. Chag Sameach, sorry it's a dark message, but uh, it's uh, um, that point in world history. Daniel Andrews has ascended to become Minister for Consumer Affairs, Minister for Gaming and the Minister assisting the Premier for Multicultural Affairs. And with 5 million people in Victoria from over 250 different countries, representing about 130 different cultures and traditions, he's really got his job ahead of him. So he's not only a Minister, he's the Member for Mulgrave, he's the former Deputy Campaign Manager for the Victorian ALP, I'd like you to welcome Daniel Andrews. Shalom and good afternoon. Um, it is my great pleasure to be here today and to be joined by my parliamentary colleagues, and I'll just go in order. Uh, Michael Danby, the Federal Member for Melbourne Ports, and I acknowledge Joshua as well. Thank him for his uh, kind words. And Alan Shay, the Member for Caulfield. Tony Lupton, my parliamentary colleague from the State Parliament as well, Member for Moran, Greg Hunt, Member for Flinders here representing the Prime Minister, and of course our uh, Lord Mayor John So. 
not just a great friend of the Jewish community, but also a great friend of multiculturalism right across South uh, Victoria. Um, I come to bring the best wishes of the Premier Victoria, Steve Brax, today, and uh, to all of you, I wish you a happy jury. This is a wonderful uh, opportunity to come together and talk about very significant moments in history. It's an important opportunity for you to celebrate your own cultural, um, your own cultural heritage, and importantly, to pass it on to younger members of the Jewish community here in the centre of Melbourne. Uh, and indeed, I'm sure that celebrations like this are going on uh, not just here in uh, the centre of Melbourne, but indeed right across our state. Um, we, as a community, can be very proud of the fact that Victoria is a tolerant uh, and a particularly harmonious place to live and work. Our cultural diversity is a great strength. Our cultural diversity is what makes us an interesting and dynamic um, and great place to live. We have to value that. We have to value the many different voices, the many different backgrounds that come together to, as I said, make us a dynamic place to live. It's a great strength. It should never be taken for uh, granted. We need to uh, be loud about the fact that cultural diversity, multiculturalism, a multi-faith community is a precious thing. We have to value it. We have to stand up for it. And as a government, that's what we've tried to do over the last seven years, and in very much so in a bipartisan way, right across the political differences that sometimes dominate the discussion about public policy. Multiculturalism and respect for cultural diversity is something that I think we share right across the Victorian <coughs> spectrum, and that's perhaps reflected today in the fact that we have representatives from all of those different uh, tendencies within Victoria.